everybody. My name is John. I'm with FMP Wargamers and welcome to our Tuesday show. Sorry about the um, kind of messing around thing. I'm trying to uh, get a million things done today and usually we do the show. Well, I've been uh, revamping the show to eight o'clock on Tuesdays as a request to several of our viewers, or actually quite a few number of our viewers. And uh, I don't know about the results. I don't know if it's um, worked out. You guys let me know. Uh, jump on the chat here or jump on the YouTube chat um, and then just put a comment on there. I'll see the comments. I'll jump on and maybe I'll put a poll up on our Facebook page to see if you guys like this time frame. So we want to be able to maximize the amount of people that we've got watching. Excuse me one second. Still fighting off this infection. Um, so got to take my peels. All right, so we got a lot to cover today and I don't want to waste too much of your time tonight. Uh, just make sure I'm just checking all the analytics here. Make sure that once again, I forgot to put my microphone in front of me. So if you've been trying to hear what I've been saying, I apologize. <laughs> One of these days, you know, I should probably have a checklist, uh, right here. The past couple days I've dropped the ball on that and forgot to um, I forgot to jump on here and uh, uh, put set everything up correctly my table is a mess right now with all this painting stuff I'm trying to get things ready for um, the weekend GT at the atomic hobby shop and I'm trying to get my entry ready for um, armies on parade I'm gonna drop off hopefully Friday night at the games workshop store I want to compete and it's kind of a haphazard really quick build army so I don't know if it's going to be great or not we'll see or a quick build project I'm not feeling too confident about it right now but we'll see how it works out so what are we talking about tonight that is a good question <laughs> what did I put up there oh yes 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 okay so let's get in on everything and I'm going to talk about the Sisters of Silence rules, pretty much the White Dwarf that just dropped. Um, then I'm going to give you guys some other inside style information that I uh, I got today um, from one source and then from Chapter Master Valric. I got a little bit, well, I watched his show. Um, it was on my YouTube. Uh, it was looping when I was watching YouTube videos today and he just popped up on, on some, for some reason on a hit list. And I listened to him and I was like, son of a gun, I didn't have all that. So I'm going to talk about that and we're going to cover a little bit about what I talked about yesterday. Uh, if you were not paying, you're not on board yesterday or not yesterday, but Sunday show, I apparently I have caused a slight, slight stir. stir. Um, anyways, if you're just joining us on, on YouTube, Make sure, let's see here, trying to get it right. Hit that uh, subscribe button or follow button, whatever is up there. And it really helps support the channel. We've got a contest coming here. Actually, two contests that are going to be coming here pretty soon. Ski's working on one. I'm going to support him on that. I'm working on the other. And it's going to be a nice big... Um, it's going to up our viewership. And as a thank you to all of our supporters we are going to be handing out price support. If you're local, we'll get it to you locally. If you're far away, we'll ship it to you. I don't know what the shipping cost will be if you're like in South Africa, uh, like Leon, or, um, oh gosh darn it, um, I can't think of the gentleman's name, but I believe he's in the UK, or at least his tag is in the UK. So let's talk about a number of things. First thing, uh, big thanks to Kevin. Gave me a little tidbit of information I kind of already assumed, but uh, it was really kind of just speculation. Uh, he let me know that he got some information concerning the in Inquisition or Inquisitor Inquisitor movie that's coming out or TV show that's coming out sometime. My guess is about next year or the year after. Now, my initial speculation was that there was going to be a TV show coming. And I've talked about it several times over the past year. And ideally, you know, I thought it was going to be really centered around Imperial Guard because that's something that is relatable to us. More relatable than a Space Marine. And it's easier to get inside the heads 
of the characters that are not these superhuman or transhuman beings that think differently than us and whatnot. And I'm not going to go into that spiel, but uh, I, I figured it was going to be that or the Inquisition. And, you know, we lucked out. It was uh, about Inquisitor Eisenhorn. So what Kevin dropped on me was that they've been working on or kind of building up to this or working on it actually for about two years now. I figured that it's been working on a while. They've, they've probably been working on for a lot longer and just the stars aligned recently in recent years and um, their new big push with 40K with 8th edition and Age of Sigmar and all of a sudden, once I got rid of Mr. Uh, Kirby over there, they started seeing profits going up and things started to turn around for them. So of course, they started looking at um, expanding their brand, which they've do, been doing an amazing job of expanding the brand. So it only made sense that at some point they would be in a very comfortable position after they have blitzkrieged um, major multimedia sources, comic books, uh, if you haven't seen the Marvel deal, the Funko Pop, the uh, Bandai models, the chibis that are coming, all the video games, the uh, Warhammer Adventures for the teens. They've been doing a fantastic job. And it was only, it was inevitable that a TV show or a movie was going to come out so it looks like tv show will be first we don't know what platform if anybody says they know what platform it is they're lying to you because they have not announced nobody has announced um our best speculation is bbc one uh netflix and amazon are really the top ones and even though they have a partnership with marvel it does not necessarily mean it's going to be on marvel uh disney plus or sorry, D Disney Plus, especially the mature content that the Eisenhower series would have. It's going to be very difficult to put that level of violence of all sorts and nastiness and creepy content on Disney Plus. So Amazon, Netflix, BBC One, really Amazon or Netflix are really the most ideal choice. Really Amazon as it comes down, we come down to it, but I digress. Um, so it's been at work for at least the past two years, which means that we're probably a year away before they start um, uh, enlisting or hiring actors or whatever it is, um, whatever the terminology is, getting their actors ready. Uh, script will pro the scripts will probably be start getting done by next year and they'll probably start what's the term hiring new actors I, I guess that's the terminology and we'll probably see it in 2021 god please let me live long enough to see this series come to fruition all right so let's get into the white dwarf real quick here i don't want to go over too much because you guys are probably going to get it in your hands today or tomorrow uh, maybe even by this weekend maybe you've got a subscription or you got it uh, I don't know if they do the EPUB version anymore so I don't want to go over too much I'm not going to reveal um, any data because I don't want to take away from the uh, from your f uh, friendly local gaming store like where I work at Atomic Hobby Shop I don't want to um, rob them of those uh, those sales so I'm not going to reveal all the pictures I'm not going to reveal all the content word for word I just want to give you guys a good idea of what's in here and then we could move on to the, the next part so if you have not been paying attention white dwarf has uh, well they changed a lot of their staff really happy about that and they've also change the format you're not getting advertisements anymore unless you consider all the pictures and everything in here as advertisements but you're not seeing hey what's coming out next month um here look at these bundle deals all whatever they've actually changed the entire content to feature uh, all sorts of articles history um like there's all it'll go into a whole bunch of sections about age of sigmar which they do um this month has a plethora of material for a lot of games. I'm going to try to cover them all. One of the big ones is the Tome Celestia, the host of Celeski. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. That is the new Demon Prince for Slanesh, um, the, the dual Demon Prince Herald model. That uh, looks like it's pretty much about, it's talking about his host. It's talking about him or her or it or they 
whatever the terminology is, and a lot more detail about uh, that character, Seleski. And you actually get some nice size comparisons. If you haven't seen the model, you, you know, there's some nice size comparisons versus, say, Stormcast Eternals in here. So really cool stuff in here. Um, and then they give you a host of Seleski battle traits. Um, this is basically an expansion onto the uh, Hedonites of Slanesh. Now, basically, um, it it's uh if you want to run a host for Celeski, Celeskin host or whatever, it tells you everything you need how much the different um war scroll battalions are there's the vengeful alliance the devout supplicants the vengeful throng and the demon steel contingent and it gives you the prices form all the little benefits that each of them get it's it, pretty much exactly what you expect from the war scroll battalions but if you wanted to not run around with um, like the typical ones with a bunch of keeper secrets and you really wanted to focus on uh, the Demon Prince Seliski, the Vengeful Alliance, then this will be a huge boon to you, especially if you're even wanting to start Slanesh. This could be a huge boon because you also get to toss in um, a lot of Mortal Realm heroes, Chaos Knights, uh, Chaos Chariots, Soul Grinders. Um, chaos spawn units war shrines so there's a lot of units that are that i don't think are actually in the hidden knights of slanesh that you get to add into this and run it as a uh, war scroll battalion so really awesome that they're able to do that the new content that they've been putting in white dwarves are, is really good i would say i'd give it about 80 percent um hit rate there's occasionally a white dwarf that comes out that's less than ideal i would say for the masses um like last month with the dark angels uh, left a little bit to be desired there it was a i feel like a, they missed an opportunity so you got all those i'm not going to go into those also because i want to leave that open for ski so he will go in onto that more because i don't want to rob uh ski of any age of sigmar stuff he knows about it more than I do and will be able to explain it a lot better. I just wanted to give you a brief overview of that. Uh, they have a nice painting guide in here for Seleski. And I, I really hope I'm pronouncing that, that right. Nice little uh, short story that they've been putting in here. There's probably about four short stories in here, which I really, I, like I said before, I really love that they're doing that. Um, more articles, like uh, they're talking about the realm of heavens. Uh, how you do the paint schemes, and of course the paint, paint splatter. You get to see all the different army types. Um, Stormcast Eternals, um, the Seraphon, Seraphon. Some great, great artwork and conversions. A lot to work with there. So I really, if you're just wanting um, a new paint scheme, uh, you want some new ideas for Age of Sigmar armies, This so far, this is a good uh, book for you, or a magazine for you to get. Then they're going to go into the Warhammer 40,000 section. Once again, I'm not going to go into everything, but they are talking about a lot about Apocalypse, uh, about four or five pages of Apocalypse. Then we get into the juicy bits, ladies and gents. Uh, starts off with a sh very short story about the Sisters of Silence, how they operate. Um, and then it goes into the in Index Imperialis. This is an update to their rules from the Codex, or the Index, sorry. Um, index one or two I forget which one that is and so they give you a nice um, overview of, of how long this uh, silent sisterhood has been operating and they date back tens of thousands of years so before the Emperor as far as we know uh, before Space Marines all that tens of thousands of years that's how long they've been around and they have a nice little confirmation thing I talked to you guys a couple weeks ago or about a week ago about how things are coming to a head and something bad is going to be happening with the psychic awakening that um, since the Horus Heresy and actually before then there's been an explosion in the number of psychers in the galaxy especially human psychers and we already saw what happened to what happened with the Eldar and um, Slanesh when they're that was a completely psychic race what happened to them and they didn't have the numbers that humanity does 
So think about that and how many um, the Eldar race exploding, basically giving birth to Slanesh because of all the psychic blah, blah, blah stuff that they had going on. Not going to ruin that for you. And think about how many billions of human psychers there are. Because remember, we're feeding, um, I on, on average, 300 and 65,000 um, psychers, I think, or 365 million. One of the two uh, numbers to the emperor per year, per solar year. So there's billions, maybe trillions of uh, psychers, uh, human psychers. Anyways, so they're going to go into it. They break down the whole organization from the beginning through the Horus Heresy to now. And they even um, break down how what they're called vigils, or that would be like chapters or covenants, covenants um, or covenants, whatever it is that Sisters of Battle have, and lots of little motos. And then we get into the nice rules. Once again, I'm not going to go over the full rules because I want you guys to go out to your local store. I want you to buy the magazine because it really supports your local stores. So, good news, bad news. Bad news, we're not seeing any special characters. There's no... HQs or any other options except for what we already had. The prosecutors, which had the bolt guns, the vigilators with their uh, great swords, and the witch seekers with the flamers, and of course their Nold Maiden Rhino. So no changes there. A little disappointing, but I don't think of it as um, a negative. They're just updating the rules because the indexes are going away. They're going to go away. And we're going to be getting the Warhammer Legends probably this fall. Um, or sometime after this fall. Uh, so the indexes are going to become defunct, which is good and bad. I'll let you decide on that one. So they're going to go away. So they had to put this relevant army that they did not want to add to the Warhammer Legends line into relevancy. So they made exclusive rules in the White Dwarf to keep them updated and relevant. So what is good about this is that they updated some keywords, they updated some, uh, reworded some stats um, in line with the FAQs and errata that they've done, and nice point drops uh, across the board. Almost everything got a price, re actually, um, nothing got a price increase. It looks like everything got a the, fl the Flamers and I believe the Executioner Great Blades all got a point drops. So you're looking at anywhere from um, a regular 11 point model or 10 point model to a, I think at max, a 16 point model. And then the Rhino, it's, um, you know, runs 60, 70 points. So really cheap to run these. Um, and they still have the same rule. This one rule I'll read to you guys. Eh, better not. Um, you can run them without a Warlord in their own detachment. I can at least tell you that much. So really cool about that. Nice little boost, especially if you're facing a lot of Psyker armies and you want to be able to disrupt them. That is a, they're a good unit to have. Ridiculously cheap and not too bad point-wise for, it sucks that they're a toughness three unit. They're basically like Sisters of Battle. Same armor, same weapons, or I mean, I, I mean same stat lines. But they have some really impressive weapons like that Executioner Blade. Uh, plus one strength, minus three AP, and D3 damage. And at two attacks apiece, it's still brutal. Then we got a really awesome guide for painting Sisters of Silence. And even if you don't have Sisters of Silence, how they do their um, the gold armor and the purple and all the, the everything that they do here, the, the pale skin... And even the eyes, it's a great, great uh, painting guide for whether you use these these girls, or these ladies or not. Really good guide. Um, in fact, I'm probably going to be adding some of these techniques to the army that I'm working on right now. In fact, I see two techniques right here that I am going to be applying. So then we get, you get to see all the different vigils. So really cool. You get to see the different vigils, the bone tigers, the auric eagle. Uh, the Crimson Lion Cadre, the Steel Drake Cadre, the different, uh, the Ebon Talon, some really awesome alternate um, color schemes. And they even walk you through what colors there are for the armor and the cloth. Um, so technically you're getting two, four, six different color schemes with the paints and a nice little art gallery. 
So really freaking awesome. Whether you play Sisters of Battle or not, I don't know meta-wise if they're going to have a place in there. I think there's a lot more efficient units, but if you're having difficulties and you're an Imperial player and you have difficulties with dealing with Psykers, it's not a bad option to go with five of them in a Rhino. Um, they're very... I mean, their ability to disrupt psychic powers is nice. And their ability to engage psychers, it puts them on par. Even with very tough psyker opponents, they're going to be messing them up with the ability to reroll wounds and such. Then we get the lovely <laughs> uh, tale of four warlords. If you've, uh, if you've never seen them do this, it's really great because it, it follows their whole campaign and how they, you know, each stage of the campaign, they've got to. Um, they've got to increase their force and what are the decisions they make what are the decisions they make because about their paint scheme and the background because that's all plays a part of what uh, goes into the tale for warlords something I've thought about um, engaging ski Ben Jonathan and myself in is um, and, and if TJ is interested I know he's on hiatus but if he's interested in doing a tale of four or five gamers and you know, document that over, you know, over live feed and videos. All right, so I wasn't done with how many good things are in here. So we already got um, two updates and upgrades to 40K and Age of Sigmar. Kill Team, um, updates for Adeptus Astartes. You're like, what could they add? Well, Incursors, Eliminators, Infiltrators, and Reavers now have updates. Um, also, Intercessors and Lieutenants in Phobos Armor. So everything just got um, updated for pretty much all the uh, Primaris models that you can take in the game. So nice little update. Um, gives them their their special tactics. There are new tactics. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six updates, plus the range and close combat weapons. So if you're playing Kill Team, or even if you're not, if you want to actually play a competitive Warhammer 40,000 game that's designed for uh, competitive play, man, this is it. Kill Team is it. So I'm almost through this magazine. Once again, sorry I'm not showing you guys everything. They have a nice battlefield modification um, about conversions, and they show a huge gallery of conversions with the um, the Primaris Marines, especially the new Incursors and... Um, Infiltrators are coming out. Uh, once we get past that, and the, the hits, I mean, it keeps going, man. We now have also a huge section on um, Blackstone Fortress, where you get to add in orcs, uh, a flash uh, flash kit. You also have uh, Beast Grove. So if you're doing Underworlds, updates there. Um, whole new characters, uh, Black, uh, not Black Library, but... An amazing article on um, or art pictures of um, Golden Demon, and then the first update of Aeronautica Imperialis. They give you a full gameplay, and then um, a whole new uh, update on um, some scenarios, a new scenario, and a new orc and Imperial Navy. Um, ace pilots. Um, let's see here. Flight commander Leos Leos Answith, the flying the wings of courage, and the sky muncha. Uh, the kill flying the killer eagle, eagle. Oh god, orc names. And then it's gonna wrap up with a whole bunch of stuff about uh, Necromunda. Man, they really jam packed this white dwarf. I'm sorry I'm not giving you all the details in there because I want you to go to your local store and buy the issue. Uh, it, it's going to be it, it's very good issue. Even if just look at the paint articles, whether you're an Age of Sigmar player or Warhammer 40,000 player or some combination thereof, any of the paint articles in here could help improve your paint game. So the one big thing I want to talk about at the end, which is going to go into um, the next part of what I wanted to talk about tonight was next month beware the inquisition let me put up a picture here uh we got inquisitor kazimov cody as uh, a generic inquisitor and i forget what her name is she was the one that popped out with um 
the Gilliman box set. I believe it was the Gilliman box set. Or the other one. Anyway, she popped up and or maybe it was with Saint Celestine, whichever. Uh, she popped up and was a is a named character with the Order of Hereticus. Um, so this is I think going to be a, just a White Dwarf exclusive update army. I don't think we're going to see a codex, even though uh, some of the information I had before was talking about armies of the Imperium, and all we got was actually it moving to Kill Team, which I was a little disappointed and a little let down that that, that codex did not come to fruition. Um, fruition is one of my words for the day. So I'm, what I'm thinking is that we're going to see it in a next month's White Dwarf, in November White Dwarf. It's going to be an update for the rules because as Games Workshop said earlier this year, they don't have any intention of doing a full Inquisition Codex because the Inquisition does not operate on a large-scale battlefront. They are agents that will fight alongside, but they don't mobilize full armies. I mean, they might... Um, kind of manipulate or command um, actual military commanders to to go to war but they don't they're not generals they don't take to the field so that's why we're not going to see them so we will see next month them and it'll probably be also that one from the rogue trader box that inquisitor from the rogue trader box it's not going to be a big thing ladies and gents but it's going to be a nice update because as i said indexes are going away and we're going to be seeing warhammer legends but some of these models are not going to make it to warhammer legends so they have to update them into these exclusive white dwarf articles so at the end of the year they can go hey here's the um chapter approved and here's you know that update for all those articles we put out for the year and they might get something sisters about or sisters of silence might make their way to the custodes because we see crimson fist got their update in a white dwarf and all their stuff is getting um transitioned over into the imperial fist codex that comes out in two weeks on the 26th so they could end up in the adeptus custodes or a future um unknown um imperial book codex of some sort i don't know it's all possible so we'll see i'm excited though Especially that uh, they're going to be doing that. We might see Inquisitor Kazimov escape the clutches of Warhammer Legends and make it back onto the tabletop with some adjusted rules. Let's cross our fingers that that happens. So what else do I have to talk about? I already, t let's see here. I think I covered everything. I'm trying to remember, uh, and I'm hoping by me talking, I'm going to remember exactly what Valric had, uh, Chapter Master Valric, Valric had said. Um... But, oh, I know. I need to find my note-taking thing because it uh, it coincided with um, the information. You know what? I can remember what it is for the most part. It coincides with some of the information I got. Perfect. So first, let's go ahead and chat real quick about what's coming. Another thing that's coming out. We already talked about it. The Infiltrator and Incursor Bach is coming out. There's no, you know, if, if you never picked up the Space Marine Codex or you don't know what's going on with them, all these rules are actually in the Space Marine Codex. It's just nice to be able to actually see the models, but it, it, most of these pictures are already in the Codex or the Codex Supplement, so it's nothing new. It just, they're just giving us a nice preview. It's really weird that they delayed it. I understand the reason why, but it's such a weird delay. It's a weird update that they're, they're doing. I don't know if I necessarily approve of it, but eh, whatever. So let's talk, before I go to this next part, let's talk about what we're going to be, what's coming up. This is uh, what I had, a little bit of what I had, and then Chapter Master Valorant, big shout out to him. And if I'm butchering your name, sir, on uh, your YouTube channel, I apologize. What the heck? <gasps> What the fudge? I think I might have been supplanted. I don't know if we're actually streaming two different shows or not. Holy crap. I just looked over and it looks like I forgot. 
Age of Sigmar. It looks like it's playing. Somebody, uh, no. Gosh darn it, guys and gals. I am really sorry if the show got disrupted. It looks like Ski is streaming a show. I'm not sure. Something has happened. I'm going to wait and let me check this update real quick here because I can't see it. Wait, I might be able to see it on this other one. Oh, okay. So we're still good. I don't know what the heck that was about. All right. Sorry about that. Momentary panic. I thought we had two streams going on and I was going to panic. So let me get through this real quick here because I'm at the 32 minute mark and I'm really, really trying to get these down. So what um, I had and what Chapter Master Valric had over on YouTube was some Christmas bundles. So we don't know everything that's coming out for the holidays. Uh, we got an idea. Well, we know that the Sisters of Battle are going to get their starter army set with the 25 models, the cards, and the uh, their special or their exclusive special edition codex for about 175 I think maybe $180. Hard to tell right now, but... That sounds about right. So you're gonna play. You're gonna pay a pretty penny, but you're getting um, pretty much um, a quick grab before the rest of the product drops. Probably late November, or early December. So they're gonna to want to sell as many of those boxes as possible before it. The rest of it goes on on sale. So grab your box right away. We're probably gonna pre-order like 20 of them at the games at the Atomic Hobby Shop. So what else could be coming out for Christmas? We know there's gonna be the paint bundles. It'll be all the little knickknacks, all this silly stuff. The red gabo. Ooh, that'd be so much fun. Um, <laughs> but the big thing that we're looking for is the holiday bundles. Now I'm gonna wait for Ski to jump on his show that if he has the information on the AOS bundles, cause I don't have that information. They did not pass it on to me cause they usually just get 40K information. So some weird stuff, but might be, I believe there's some credibility to it. First up, let's talk about Xenos. Uh, I don't know anything about chaos. The only thing that um, this is one of the things that Chapter uh, Master Valric had for sure was that it looks like Dark Eldar are going to get a bundle, and I believe he had said that Craft World will. So this might be a cool bundle. This might be your second chance if you do not get Blood of the Phoenix to pick up if they if they include Jane Czar, the Banshees, or um, Drezzar and the incubi in those uh, bundles if those are the bundles once again grain of salt but we we'll see so no idea what's in the contents we can only speculate the other two that i thought were really interesting and i should actually i'm hoping i'll know um by the end of the week uh, i've got a <laughs> actually i've got a, a facebook um not facebook facetime um Plan with uh, Mr. Smith and Mrs. Smith. We're all going to conference in and we're going to talk about a few things that are going to be coming up. So it'll be nice to be face to face with them again, so to speak. And when I go to the UK next year, it'll be even greater because then I can buy him a beer or, you know, I don't know, donuts or uh, fish and chips, whatever it is that, <laughs> that, they, that they like, bangers and mash. I don't care. But we're going to get, I'm going to get that to him. I'm going to buy him something, you know, maybe even take over a, a lovely little gift for all the information they dropped me over the past two years. Anyway, so we're going to talk about that. And maybe I can get a little bit more information exactly where those bundles are before they get announced. Be I would still start saving up your money, ladies and gents. Start saving up that money because you know they're going to be expensive. They're probably going to be one fifty to two hundred dollars for the bundles. That's about I think they're like one eighty last year. But you're getting about three hundred dollars worth of, of product in the box. Um, I think last year I think the lowest one was like a hundred and ten worth extra product in there. Um, so. Yeah, it was like an extra $110 worth of product was the lowest one, or maybe $90. But it was still, it was a ridiculous amount of product that you got for free. So, here we go. I'll save the good one for last. Let's go to the weird one. And I, I'm, even I, uh, I think uh, Chapter Master Valk was a little skeptical about this one as well. The Blood Angels will be getting a um, Christmas bundle, or Christmas box, army box set. Uh, so probably Sanguinary Guard, Intercessors, I'm imagining, um, 
than probably repulsors. I don't. I really don't know. Um, but I, I believe it was there. They, we were keying in on Sanguinary Guard being in a box. Does that mean that we're going to see anything um, soon for Blood Angels? No, but we know Blood Angels are going to be in Book Three for the Psychic Awakening. So that means that this might be a nice prep time for Blood Angels because they'll probably get a nice codex update, brand new codex right around the corner. Now the other good one that I was really surprised about and really happy about was Salamanders. I think this is the first time Salamanders will ever have gotten a box set. Um, Imperial Fist for last year, fantastic box. I think it was like, uh, 20 or 30 intercessors. I believe there's a Redemptor Dreadnought in it. Um, there was a Captain and possibly a Repulsor in it. I mean, it was a big box and it was juicy. Um, it was a great starter army if you were wanting to do Primaris Marines. I think there was Aggressors in there too. It was just ungodly amount of models in there for a very, very good price. I want to say it was like 180 It was such a freaking steal. So expect them to be doing that this year, but not with Imperial Fist, but with Salamander. So that's probably going to have um, Adrax Agatone, the captain of the third company that's coming out in two weeks on the 26th. And we'll probably also feature, I'm betting aggressors and probably um, at least one squad of intercessors, maybe two. Uh, I see repulsors popping up in there, maybe um, an impulsor, maybe a, a Redemptor Dreadnoughts, they like to push those Redemptor Dreadnoughts. I don't think they sell all that well, so it's a great way for them to uh, essentially dump the product and get people to buy it. And even if you trade it or sell it, hey, you still bought the product and it's off their shelf, especially for it being something that doesn't sell too well. So is, is all that going to be in there? I don't know. And once again, grain of salt, but it looks solid. The information looks solid. It's a good source. We both have, I think we both have the same source. So, I mean, I, I only have one, two, three, four sources. And uh, who knows? I'm, I'm guessing that Valric probably has the same one. Um, I know Kirioth has, uh, well, I don't know for sure, but I believe he has the same one. I do, one of the same ones I do. I don't think they have Mr. or Mrs. Smith because we don't share that same information so yay so at least those bundles we know that there'll be age of sigmar bundles so we're excited about that yay age of sigmar bundles and it might be a good time for them to do a cities of sigmar i would would be i think a good one because a lot of that product is web store only and it'd be a great time for them to sell off Lots of um, lots of the old dwarves, the old human empire, the uh, dark elves and steam tanks and all that stuff. It'd be, I think it'd be an excellent opportunity for them to package that in a nice big box, very juicy, just in time for you to start your uh, Cities of Sigmar army. Once again, I'm going to let Ski figure that one out. If that's true, that's me speculating. And also, my other guess would be an Uruk, Uruk Orc War Clans for the Iron Jaws. That would be another solid guess. Once again, I'm going to let Ski figure that one out. I am not going to try to determine that. I'll leave that to him. Um, but I'm th that's what I'm thinking is that at least those two and probably a Stormcast Eternal. Ugh. I hope not. Could be a Daughters of Cain. Who knows? There's lots of possibilities. Uh, Spooky Ghost, the... Uh, um, whatever there, I can't think of their name. My brain is not working right now. So yay for all that. We know that the bundles are going to come. Uh, I would imagine four to six total, uh, probably three on each side. So expect it, save up your money, um, ask for it for Christmas, go buy your local friendly gaming, uh, your friendly local game store or your Warhammer store, games workshop store. Fill out the gift list. We got a gift list at the Atomic Hobby Shop. And what that gift list does for you guys at all these different locations is gives you the opportunity to fill out that gift list and you get to keep a copy. And then you leave the other copy with us and when your family, your friends, loved ones, whatnot, go, hey, um, what do you want for Christmas? You, you can just easily say, you know what? I have a gift registry at Atomic Hobby Shop, for example. 
you can go there take a look at the gifts choose what you want it'll be a surprise because i got like six pages of material um and it's a great opportunity to basically i mean even as adults he, he still wants stuff for christmas teenagers kids it doesn't matter, man. We still want stuff for Christmas. We still like getting presents for Christmas. And why not get what you want or at least increase the odds? So go to your local store, like my shop, the Atomic Coffee Shop. Go to your Warhammer store, the Games Workshop store, and fill out that gift, uh, gift registry list um, or gift list registry, whatever the terminology is. It's gonna, It could help you improve your odds instead of getting socks and underwear unless you need socks and underwear which you should just be buying on your own. Don't wait once a year for your family to get it because that's all they're ever going to get you. Um, but if that's your thing, whatever. <laughs> all right, so let me talk about something that's a little grim. Um, and the other day, uh, I'm going to keep this stuff up, and it's probably nice that I'm, I, I have the page up on um, with Dark Eldar stuff, and these color very beautiful and colorful well, at least the wings are very well done. Uh, I'm not sure about the silver paint job on this altar, but um, had some stuff up here for um, Dark Eldar when I'm talking about something bad. So, I'm gonna, uh, yesterday or Sunday I talked about the state of the meta and how things are getting <laughs> way out of hand. And uh, some people said, hey, you know, we, we understand what you said, we, we support you on it, believe you, or I eh, don't care either way, or there was a few that might have talked to me in person or sent me a message, you know, or carrier pigeon, whatever, that uh, were not too happy that I was calling out players for bad behavior and um, saying that, you know, the community has, um, has an issue that needs to be dealt with, the sense of entitlement, the sense of, I guess, privilege, that Games Workshop owes them something. So that they their voice matters to such an extent that Games Workshop is going to bend the knee. You know what? Games Workshop's not going to bend the knee, ladies and gents. You know what? Let me take it back. Very unlikely that they're going to bend the knee because they do their own thing. They dance to the beat of their own tune, they march to the beat of their own step, whatever that terminology is. They do their own thing. And because they've got their their plan laid out for years. And they've got the development and growth of their games planned out. And it's not contingent upon the minority, let's say, because we're all competitors. We're all competing when we play this game. So I'm not going to say competitive players. I'll say the tiny minority of or in regards to the entire hobby, the minority of tournament, is, which is the tournament players, which actually, I shouldn't even say tournament players, the vocal minority of the tournament players, which are a minority in the overall. Does that make sense? I hope so. So there's a tiny, tiny group um, within a, a small group that's part of the larger group that is calling for weird and i'm going to use this term so you guys understand but i'm i'm really i hate this term i i think it should just we should just say adjustments because it just sounds so ridiculous and silly and i think it kind of inflames um the sit or kind of exasperates that basically makes the situation worse by saying that by using the terminology nerf hey denner what's going on man so i think uh, but I'm going to go ahead and use that term nerf. I think adjustment is better because that nerf is an inflammatory, believe it or not, uh, from a psychological standpoint, is an inflammatory word. So they're calling for the nerfs. Uh, God, it makes me... Ugh. Nerfs, OP, Krylon. Oh, God, I, I, I might need like an antacid or something. Um, so they're calling for the nerfs of... Flyer lists and 40, 000, Warhammer 40,000 and Iron Hands. And Iron Hands, are the, they're essentially asking for a complete overhaul. They're wanting them to redo it. And in some cases, people are wanting them to redo the entire Space Marine Codex. So, 
and, and they're so adamant about it. It's really bewildering that uh, I'm surprised there's not a change.org um, petition up for them to change the uh, change the codex and the codex supplements. I'm 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 not kidding. I'm surprised that they have not done that yet. That's how um, that's how much vitriol is coming out of these people's mouths or, or their te their typed messages. So it's a really it's bewildering that they that the players and they're passionate about their game they're passionate about their tournament play and whatnot i understand that and i support them on their passion but what i don't support anybody on is this belief that just because they don't like how the state of the game is that they're going to force a multi-million dollar nearly billion dollar company or, or half mil half billion dollar company or actually they're over half billion dollar company um into submission like they're Disney or Apple or Blizzard, Activision or any of those other companies that bent the knee to uh, China. So I don't think that they're going to, I mean, they're going to get them to do that. They're just going to brush them off because Games Workshop has a plan and they're, it takes time to enact that full plan. So what I think people are just not paying a frickin' attention to, which is very frustrating because they just keep going on and on about Iron Hands are broken, Eldar Flyer Spam is broken, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I mean, day in, day out. And, you know, there are some people, I understand, you know, that the people that ma are making sense because they're providing a logical um, analysis of it, it makes sense. And I, to an extent, I agree with you. I empathize and sympathize with you. I do. But what people are, well, are they get so worked up that they're forgetting that this is the first of basically 8.5 or um, uh, edition, nine, uh, ninth edition, 8.5 unofficially. And it, it's basically setting the precedence of every codex that's going to follow. And people are looking at the Psychic Awakening and just just a tidbit of what we got from the Eldar stuff. And they're thinking that, well, the Eldar are screwed in this this new edition because they didn't get a, excuse me, a huge upgrade in the Psychic Awakening. You guys gotta remember that that Psychic Awakening is A, it is um, the preamble, I guess I, I think that's the right word, preamble for their codex, just like Vigilus was the preamble for and if that's not the right word, correct me, um, for the, um, the Space Marine Codex. So this is just the beginning. And some of that stuff that showed up in the Vigilist books didn't wasn't all that great until it showed up again in the Space Marine Codex and all of a sudden everything else had a nice synergy to it. So you take the Psychic Awakening, yeah, it doesn't look all that great. There's some good stuff, there's some bad stuff. There's stuff that needs, that, that there's nothing in there. It's going to show up in your codex, Dark Eldar, Craft World Eldar, and eventually Yanari Codex. That's coming, I'm telling you. The So what you're not seeing is the full picture, because this is just part of the campaign that's going to reshape this edition into the next edition. This is setting the stage for what's to come. So everything you're seeing right now with the Space Marine Codex, Space Marine Codex supplements, is setting the precedent, setting the groundwork, setting the framework for your codex. You've got to wait. Just like Space Marines, just like Space Marines have had to wait since the beginning of 8th edition to be a good, solid, standalone army. That's two years, guys. Two years that they've had to go and be on the back foot behind all these other armies. Everybody else has had a, their day in the sun. And now Space Marines have it. And it, yeah, it's overwhelming because it's good. It's good. But it's setting the precedent. It's setting the stage for your books. You've got to wait now. Just like... Space Marines waited, but on the flip side, you you Space Marine players, you don't get the bitch. 
you don't get to complain about all the heck you're getting from all the other players because you guys are just as guilty when the Inari were unfairly uh, targeted for, uh, for pretty much almost two years. And I say unfairly targeted because everybody said they're the top army. They're always winning. Nobody can beat them. Except when you go on and check out the records like 40K Stats, Blood of Kittens, uh, BCP app, and you see all the way back to 2017 that GTs and Majors, you, they didn't win every single one. They didn't win the majority of them. They were placing uh, randomly. Maybe your local RTTs, they were winning quite well. But overall, their overall win percentage was not 100% dominating. And you know what? And if Space Marines are going to do well right now, too bad. You're going to have to deal with it, guys and gals. Just like we had to deal with it when the Castellans were good. Uh, like we had to deal when the Custodes were good. Like we had to deal with the Chaos when they were good. And the Thousand Sons and the uh, Death Guard. Dark Eldar. Eldar. Just like we had to deal with everybody else and the Power Creep. Sorry, Necrons and Grey Knights. Sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, <laughs> Blood Angels. Sorry. But the vast majority of everybody got that wonderful power creep. And it was just, it was like leapfrogging. I mean, it was just, I mean, just leaps and bounds on how powerful all the armies got as the story progressed in their codexes. And now we just jumped to a new level. We got to power level 9,000. And people are losing their minds because the army, the flagship army, the flagship brand image of Games Workshop is on top and it's selling models. It is making profit for the company so they can continue to be in business. And y'all have a problem with that. I think the problem is not games workshop necessarily i think it might be that sense of entitlement and privilege i could be wrong i could be wrong and i'm not targeting any one individual but you know the shoe fits so these calls for nerf well um or because they're op law well, it needs to stop because i can see games workshop turning around and just not doing anything about it, which I think pretty sure what they're going to do. The FAQ and errata are probably going to just take a look over at the Ultramarines and White Scar errata. What they got is probably what Ultra or the Iron Hands and the Raven Guard are going to get. Yeah, they're about two weeks behind on the release of that FAQ or errata, but that's probably what you guys are going to get. I hate to say it, that's what you're going to get. You're going to have to suck it up. So you're not, I mean, those that are facing off against those. And yeah, that's a powerful army. And yeah, there's a bunch of bandwagoners jumping on board. And you know what? You can do it too. You can spend your money and go at it. Or you could just write it out and, and see what happens. Wait for your book to get updated. Wait for things to get changed. I mean, these calls from TOs, and I'm not going to mention anybody, which I will support a TO's event you know, to, you know, up front, but behind closed doors, I'm going to have a, I'm going to want to discuss with them that I think it's wrong, but there are people looking at banning and, um, codexes as they come out until the FAQ or errata drops. And it, this is popping up now because of the iron hands and they want to wait until an iron, until an FAQ drops. And, you know, they did point out something to me that, uh, cause I said, we don't know when this going to drop. And they very, uh, cheeky, cheekily, uh, put up, you know, images of, you know, how GW's release schedules for FAQs and errata and like, yeah, you guys are right. But they do not say that, that erratas and FAQs are going to drop within two weeks after, after a book, which is what they were wanting is to ban codexes for two weeks maybe three weeks until the errata and FAQ drops out, which I thought was setting a very dangerous, very bad precedence because you're alienating your community. And that data, is, as long as you're reporting, is useful in Games Workshop 
making the adjustments for FAQ and the errata. You just, they, they need that information. And so if you're denying people, which you're alienating your players and that's customers, that's people buying your tickets to your GT who will probably not return because of um, an unnecessary and unfair ban, then you're, I mean, you're, you're really shooting yourself in the foot guys. And I don't want your, your, your event to suffer. So, I mean, especially if you're doing the 30 day um, ban on when the codex drops, you can't use it within those 30 days at your big event. And then you tack on another two or three weeks or like right now, four weeks for the iron hands codex or the FAQ errata. Now you're looking at two months of people not be able to attend your events and that's going to piss a lot of people off and you're going to lose customers. You're going to lose attendant uh, attendees. They're going to go elsewhere because you don't like the, how the, the field is. You don't like a new army being powerful. You don't like the power creep and this FAQ and errata. I've said it again and again, is not going to be a magic bullet. It's not going to be a cure. It's not a silver bullet or a magic pill or whatever. It's not a healing potion or a greater healing potion or whatever. It's going to be just a just to be an adjustment to the language of the rules. You're not going to see them redo the codex supplement like you want. They're not going to go, you know what, you guys are right. So go and take a Sharpie and get rid of all these rules that we're, we're putting in here in magenta. That's the color they use. We're just going to take a Sharpie to all this stuff. X out these stratagems because you are a are, are tiny minority of a minority of a minority. Um, you're right. And we, gosh, man, we're so sorry. We're wrong, man. What were we thinking? Let us bend our knee down and bow down to you. You know, you tiny percentage of the tournament players, which are a tiny percentage of the overall hobbyists and gamers. We're going to bend the knee to you because you are so angry and, and upset. No guys, they're not going to do that. They're not going to get that rid of that stuff. There might be at best a increase in a couple command or command stra or stratagems may might get an extra point or two might be a clarify clarification on the ain't the wrath of the ancients i think it's called or march of the ancients might be some clarification in there but <laughs> it, you're not going to get the change you want so just sit back wait for your codex to get the power creep that's going to all of a sudden change your tune and all of a sudden you're going to be on the back foot when you're complaining about people complaining about your ultimate, ultimate powerful army that now makes the space brains look once again on the back foot for another couple years. So just, just chill out guys. We're, we're getting really ridiculous. This community is getting really ridiculous with its behavior, especially online, especially, um, with, uh, tweets and Facebook Messenger and chat groups and um, Facebook pages and um, in, not Instagram. Instagram is still safe, but it's getting ridiculous on the behavior and it's going to have a lot of negative repercussions that we don't even, I mean, to be honest, I don't even know what repercussions, but there's going to be some, there's going to be some backlash. And right now it's already looking, I mean, I'm already seeing some of that. People don't want to show up to tournaments now because of behavior and thinking that, well, it's going to be nothing but iron hand players and I don't want to go play against iron hand players because I'll just lose. And I, I, even though it's a game of chance, I'm going to lose. I'm so scared. I've been playing this game forever. I mean, come on guys, for, for God's sake. <sighs> Sorry, I'm ranting a little bit. I'm just disappointed in the way things are going with the community. It's it's become worse and worse. And this is the gaming community that could have been, you know, it, right now it's affecting Warhammer 40,000. Age of Sigmar, man, you guys need to stay strong. Don't let this type of behavior boil over because it's coming. And you guys are, because you guys are growing. That community is growing rapidly and is gaining a lot of attention and you know what what are players going to do if their favorite game is just not fun anymore they're going to migrate to something similar so be prepared so that's all i really have to say about that i'm sorry for ranting um i'm just frustrated that 
with both sides. And I'm not, and I'm not, you know, you hobbyists, you're not exempt. You're not exempt from that. You're still vocal about it. You're still being pain in the butts about it, but you're not being like that tiny percentage of the tournament players, which as I just said many times is a tiny percentage of the overall gamers. As much as tournament players hate to hear that. Yeah, you're right. Then there'll always be that guy, but it's a tiny percentage. I mean, let's say here in the U S I'm trying to remember I think globally, there's 1.8 million Games Workshop players. Um, I think that's what it was. I could be wrong. Uh, I have to have to find that information I had. But here in the U.S., I want to say it's, I want to say it's like a a couple hundred thousand. I want to say, I want to say for some reason, 230,000. I think, I could be wrong on that number. I want to say it was 230,000. I could be wrong. I'm going to dig up on that, but I'm going to go with operating on 230,000. Of those... Um, that are registered ITC players. That's about 12,040K ITC players. So let's be generous and double that. Um, double that amount for all the tournament players here in the US. So we're looking at about, say, let's, let's be, even be generous. Let's say 24,000, 23,000, 24,000, uh, 25,000 tournament players, of which at least 12,000 of them are registered in ITC with rankings and such. So that is 10% of the community. And then of that community, there's 10% that are being little whiny brats. And then even then, we're looking at 10% of that whiny, complainy part that is actually a bad element. So less than a thousand people, but they're so vocal and they're so adamant that they spread that negativity to everyone else. And I've actually seen this. Um, I was on a different, uh, actually I'm on several different team chats. Um, and I left a couple team chats. One team chat that was really solid. Man, it was good because they were bouncing ideas off each other. Um, it was growing. It was actually a well put together community. And it was really good. And really, it was happening. I mean, it was it was solid. I was excited because we're actually starting to turn things around and things were going good until we added one or two people. And once those one or two people came in, then the quality of that chat group in the past, uh, I'll just be generous, past three or four months has spiraled down the drain. It is a garbage site. I left one other team chat, um, it was a Houston chat, became garbage. It was just bad. It was just, a, it was it was bad. Really, really, really bad. Enough that I was getting um, frustrated and angry and starting to lash out at people, which I don't like to do. And I left, I just like, screw it, I'm done with you guys. You're, you're essentially, in a very well, in a very eloquent way, I said you're garbage very professional way that your, your behavior is garbage. Sorry, not that they're garbage, but their behavior is. And I just left another group about three months ago because I just got fed up with it because some of those elements from that other group moved over to this new group and they were bad. They're bad players. They are ruining that team and they know who they are. You guys that are on that team know who they are and you need to fix that. You need to scrub that element out of the team. They are bad actors. They are bad for the team. So, and I mean that's why I'm I, I'm, I'm drafting up um, for that team um, rules and regulations for the players. If you want to be on this team, you have to follow the player conduct. You have to follow. Um, and we're going to probably have, be having team tryouts next year. We're, we're going to change this up because we don't need bad elements. We need to pro- be projecting, on, at least on the FN Pro team, which is the only chat that I'm still in on a team chat besides Team Jeep. Go Team Jeep. Um, the FN Pro team, which is the only one that I'm the last bastion of team action, um, I'm drafting that up so they don't spiral down into what these other team group, these other teams, team chats have done um 
because I don't want that to happen because they're a solid group of players, uh, very professional. And yeah, they still gripe and complain, but they, when they're outside of all these other elements, their gripes and complaints turn into positive adjustments on how to deal with these things. And they work well. These guys work well together. I'm really excited about it. So I'm hoping that this write-up for team, um, uh, basically the whole team thing, will uh, will play out. That other those other two team chats, they just need to be dismantled, and um, anybody that's on them needs to leave, or at least get rid of those bad elements. And you know the the two that I'm talking about, um, you need to get rid of them because they're they're garbage. Their their behavior is garbage. Not them personally. Their behavior is garbage. They're ruining um, the sense of community and the sense of thing. And if you guys out there, guys and gals out there, you are in a team or you are in a private chats with your local group, you need, and you got those bad elements, you need to tell them, be upfront, say, look, uh, guys and gals, if you're going to be in on this Facebook page, you're going to be in this team chat, um, you're going to be in this 40K chat, this negativity, this constantly bitching and complaining and nerf this, blah, <laughs> nerf that uh, or wanting to use Krylon as a primer or whatever uh, it needs to stop if you want to remain here you need to stop this is you need to create you guys need to create a very positive I'm going to try to turn this around now you need to make this a positive Facebook page a positive chat group because that creates a great positive atmosphere it creates a great sense of camaraderie sportsmanship and that carries over into your gameplay especially you start getting rid of words like nerf and op and go you know what this is a very um complex very powerful army it really is but it's got weaknesses or you know what this very powerful army it needs a couple of adjustments we need to do some positive and negative adjustments here and there it could use a stronger adjustment here and this uh, this needs to get adjusted down. It's a little too much. But changing your terminology will kind of affect your brain. You start stop cussing so much, which I try to. You actually you'll start being more positive. Start being more positive, more upbeat. I'm not saying, hey guys, how you doing? You're looking swell today. You don't need to be doing anything like that. But you make it fun. You make it positive and the community, your your team, your chat group, your Facebook page will turn around and be positive. You need to do that. It's going to help you. And you know what? If these people are not going to be supportive, they're not going to basically toe the line of being civil and decent and being good sportsmen, then ask just very politely go you know what it's not working out we're just going to have to ask you to leave thank you for your cooperation you know later on if you want to give it a try we can try again later but right now we've got to ask you guys to step out because we're trying to like dinner said it's a hobby plastic toy soldiers let's have fun we're trying to play this game we're trying to be good competitors whether you're casual or tournament players you're still a competitor if you we're trying to be better here we're trying to be we're trying to improve our game trying to improve the hobby trying to grow the community we can't have this negative element thank you though for your service uh thank you for helping us out but until you can uh adjust everything adjust your negative attitude or negative comments and whatnot we're going to ask you to leave and then just don't even have to wait for a reply just document that you did it and remove them remove those elements i've already asked for those even though i've left that chat group um temporarily i've asked for those guys to be removed and they're still not removed and it is it's still bad it's actually i talked to somebody that's still in that chat group and it's both of them are still escalating it got so bad that in one of those the first one that i left it got so bad that one of the worst elements in that chat group left because it got that bad he was one of the worst elements oops one of the worst elements and he left it got so bad that he left and it then the other worst elements are still there i mean that's just tell you something about these about how negativity in this hobby is bad 
you got to stop it. So just ask them to cut it out, act like adults, act like good sportsmen, act like good hobbyists, or please leave. It's that simple. You just And ask them. Be an adult and ask them. I wasn't in charge of that chat groups or either one of those, so I couldn't uh, force them to leave. So I, and I asked for them to be removed. They weren't removed initially. I've since left and under after getting lots of what's going on. Why'd you leave? Blah 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 blah. I explained that I just need to take a break because of negative elements. Blah blah blah. You guys need to remove these people because it's going to get worse. And gosh darn it, all the heck, it's gotten worse. And I'm smiling because I like being right. Not in a snobbish, stuck-up, smug way. But, man, I'm glad that I my decision was the right decision. So, please, guys and gals, with your teams, with your Facebook pages, your chat groups, your your whatever you guys got going on, make sure your elements in there are the best suited for your team, for your hobby, for everything that you're trying to accomplish. And if you have bad elements in there, just politely ask them to leave or clean up their act. And if they don't leave or clean up their act, then remove them. Just have them remove or start a whole new one. Migrate over, start a whole thing and make a positive change. You guys have the power, you have the control. You have Facebook, you have uh, Facebook Messenger as an excellent social media platform to get like-minded people together. And you don't have to sit there and badmouth these people. You guys can just make blanket statements that are professional, like he did not fit with our ideals of good sportsmanship, good hobbying, good playing, good putting together. All right, you have a good night dinner. Thanks for joining. Um, Hopefully your body, sorry guys, (laughs) I just saw in the chat there. Hopefully you get it readjusted to um, being back here in the States. So, but it's, you could just say, Hey guys, we asked this person to leave because he was, uh, was not fitting with our ideal of good sportsmanship, being in the hobby, helping the community grow or the team grow. We asked them to leave. That's it. You don't have to do anything else. Document it, screenshot any actions. That way you've got proof. And if they're, especially if it blows up and just to protect yourself and proceed on, but make a positive change with your groups, guys and gals, be a positive influence. And if you need an example, look to the age of Sigmar community, they've got it going on. They know what they're doing, right? And I hope to God, I pray to God that they do not suffer the fate that this tiny, 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 less than probably a thousand people maybe 2,000 people, vocal, vocal minority, and I mean minuscule in the grand scheme of the million plus players or the hundreds of thousands of players here in North America, this tiny vocal group that are being outlandish in their behavior and how they're calling for bans and expecting GW to bend the knee. Um, I'm hoping that we could change their minds or, I hate to do it, but we got to alienate them, get them out of out of your lives. You don't need that nastiness. You need positivity. You need to keep uplifting each other, building each other up, bouncing ideas off of each other and speaking logically and cohesively and clearly with each other. Communicate. So with that said, I have definitely gone over my time here and I'm hoping this last little segment, this last probably 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes, probably about 30 minutes was eye-opening to you. Um, You guys got to remember that the Warhammer 40,000 community by large is a fantastic community. If you are in a bad spot with a bad group, reach out, find the right group, find the good group, because those bad groups are a tiny, 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 minuscule, not worth your time percentage, a tiny percentage. They're just like they're I mean, their, their overall attitude is not right for you. Move over f- to a better group. Find a better group. Even if you have to communicate outside your city, outside your state, find a better good, a better group to help you. It's there. Join FMP. Come to FMP Wargamers uh, Facebook page. Good. Join the Atomic Gamer Society page. Um, that's for Atomic uh, Hobby Shop. 
we're there to help you. We're there to work with you because we love you guys. We do. We love the hobby. We love the players. We love the sportsmanship. We want it to grow in a positive manner. So with that said, my name is John. I am with FMP Wargamers, which you probably know. Thanks to our sponsors, CreatureCaster. Well, that's actually a partner. Uh, GameMat.eu, Warzone Houston, which I am actually co-owner of. And uh, we have one more. Uh, sorry, I forget the other one. Um, oh, uh, actually two more. <laughs> Sorry about that, because uh, I just put up those icons. Thanks also to Hammerhead Games for sponsoring uh, FNP. And thank you, Atomic Hobby Shop, where, of course, I work. But they're big supporters of uh, not just Warzone Houston, FNP Wargamers, but they're also support supporting Knights at the Game Table, WarGamesCon, Alamo GT, and I believe we have have or will be supporting Dallas Open and the Desert Rat GT next year. So thank you guys so much for supporting us. All the viewers, thank you so much for putting up with me. And I'm going to be tinkering, last thing, I swear to God, I'm going to be tinkering with doing the highlight videos so we can kind of skip over some of the stuff and maybe make, hey, this is John's rant part. This is part two. Part one is him talking about this. So I'm going to work on that. I'm going to tinker with it. I'll let you know how that uh, works out. At any rate, thank you guys so much. Ski will hopefully have a show very soon. And about the all the White Dwarf stuff and the Slanesh stuff, make sure you go to your local store and pick up the latest White Dwarf for October. And get your pre-orders in for the Phoenix Rising, Blood of the Phoenix. And look for next week's Salamanders and Imperial Fist. All right. Love you guys. Have a great night. And remember, tomorrow is Wednesday. It's hump day. Enjoy that day. Have a fantastic day. No matter what, just go into tomorrow having a fantastic day. Have a good night. See you maybe tomorrow.